many of you uh, have children or are enough of a child that you might have read J.K. J. K. Rawlings' a Harry Potter series? There are a few of you. But we're talking here about something that a lot of people, including Hugo Chavez, <laughs> have been talking about for quite a few years now. It's fourth generation asymmetric war. And whether we like it or not, whether we're prepared for it or not, or <laughs> whether we want it or not, it's here. It's with us. We are dealing with it. We are engaged in a fourth generation asymmetric war. Now, what is war? War is the compulsion to accept the enemy's will. Compulsion. In the past, under the tradition of the Westphalian treaties and the so-called Peace of Westphalia, the idea was that war was between two nation states or maybe an alliance of nation states against another alliance of nation states, but it was a nation state sort of thing. And furthermore, it was a military sort of thing. Flags flying, uniforms resplendent, crossing the sovereign borders of another country to take a province or a market or maybe the whole thing. But under current experience in the last, particularly the last 20 or so years, we found that that's becoming more and more obsolete and what is more and more in vogue is the fourth generation asymmetric war. Uh, we do not want to admit, apparently, uh, that we are engaged in such a war and when we uh, don't do that, we don't have to worry about, do we? But don't we? Yes, yes we do indeed. Uh, and the uh, charge that uh, Mr. Chavez gave to the officer corps in what is in 2005 at the military academy in Caracas when he charged every member of the officer corps in Venezuela to learn fourth generation asymmetric war and develop doctrine to deal with it. We are still stuck with Westphalia pretty much <laughs> in our own thinking and when we talk about defense we talk about the uniform forces cr crossing a sovereign border. Uh, but today that's not happening. The last big confrontation of that nature in Latin America anyway took place when? Arturo? <laughs> War of the Pacific, right? That was a hundred years ago. <laughs> but we have been engaged, whether, again, whether we want to admit it or not, whether we like it or not, uh, in a problem of fourth generation asymmetric war. What's the objective of fourth generation, obje uh, uh, I say, asymmetric war? It's not to crush another military organization or to destroy a nation's capability of fielding a military force abroad. The objective is to wear down slowly but surely the will of the targeted country for the purposes of, say that again, gaining influence. Gaining influence. And eventually, beyond gaining influence, and probably more, not just eventually, but in reality, the real uh, objective is to compel that enemy to your will. And whether that type of war is as bloody as traditional shock and awe or whatever, whether it's not as bloody as the World War II was or Korean War was or some of the other wars that we've all been engaged in were, uh, the fact is that compulsion, whether it's more benign or not, is still compulsion. And something we ought to give some thought to. 
Now then, we're just, our objective is to can, uh, control or string, strangely uh, come to the point of uh, influencing a, another enemy or entity to your will. The common denominator in all this is a thing we call destabilization. We don't run uniform forces across borders anymore, or not very often anymore anyway. Uh, and military forces are not uniform. They're not all male. They're also female. They're not all adult. They're also children. And we've got to understand these things, and we've got to deal with them. And the only way we can deal with them effectively is because since they are transnational problems, what kind of solutions do we need? Ta-da! <laughs> transnational solutions. And Ambassador Naudi has suggested not only that we, do we go that direction, but we take another step further. We have to use brain power. Brain power is the main weapon in this context. Brain power. Smart power. It's not firepower. What took down the Berlin Wall? Tanks, artillery, airplanes? No, the German Deutschmark. <laughs> Ta-da! Destabilization can take many forms. And usually it's relatively benign. But again, we have the problem of compulsion. And it compulses us to where and what happened is the idea of the creation of a failing state. That's the other word that we dare not speak. War and failing state. We don't want to use the term because we maybe a politically correct, correct enough so that we don't want to uh, offend anybody. But the fact is that in some of these states we've been talking about in Central America and elsewhere, a good portion of the country is not controlled by the state. <laughs> and that's a definition of sovereignty, a definition beyond what has been talked about here. Sovereignty is the control of the territory and the people of a given recognized political entity. If the state doesn't control all of its territory, the question is who does? We use the term ungoverned territory quite often. We've sophisticated that a tad, and now we're calling it alternately governed territory. <laughs> but the point is, it's not the state that's doing this. It's non-state groups, uh, belligerent, violent, and kind of nasty like Lord Voldemort. And over a period of time, you create a failed state. And then you can, with that, you can step in and take control of that state. Not only take control of it, uh, but uh, go a little beyond, may perhaps. And then what happens to the state? It just doesn't wither away. It still exists. Some be, somebody's going to have to take care of it if, it if nobody comes in and takes control of it and runs away with it. Uh, Haiti comes to mind, uh, letting Haiti... شو بدهم يجيبوه مره ثانيه، يعني هن عم يحاولوا يلعبوا، عم يحاولوا يديروا اللعبه، وعم يحاولوا يفرضوا معارضه من خارج على طريقه الشلبي وتقسيم انت حكيت عن على التقسيم. طريقه الشلبي وعم يحاولوا يجرونا لدوله مكونات شو يعني ودولة مكونات؟ ودوله محاصصه امريكا دولة 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 امريكا تريد ان تقسم سوريا؟ امريكا فرضت علينا انه نحن نوقع اتفاقيه نقول بالشعب السوري مش واحد اكثر من شعب وانه دوله اتحاديه بالقوه امريكا بالقوه وبالنفوذ واجوا السفراء قعدوا فوق راسنا 
وقالوا بدكم تمشوا المشروع والمشروع ما مشي بأغلبية كبيرة مشي بأغلبية عادية جدا وهذا ما بيصير لأن هذا دستور بلد وقالوا هذا المشروع بدنا إياه وأنا أكثر من مسؤول اتصل فيه ويقول لي هي بدنا نمشيها ليش بدك تمشيها لماذا اليوم تطرح قضية الشعب السوري متعدد لماذا لأنه في مشروع مين اللي عم يطرحها الأمريكان طبعا فاتوا من بوابة قضية الكردية وهي قضية حق لا عيب يشترعنوا دولة علوية ولا يشترعنوا دو 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 دولات تانية للأسف استخدموا القضية الكردية بالمكان الغلط أنا بلومهم كتير أخوتنا الأكراد أنه كيف قبلوا بهذا المشروع هذا المشروع اللي مر على الاتلاف مشروع خطير جدا سيؤدي بكرة بجنيف مين اللي مر مين اللي فرضوا عليكم فرضوا النفوذ الغربي الأمريكي كل الناس اللي فاتت ما بد لو التصويت سري ما بيصوتوا وفرضوا وبالضغوط ودلوا عدين السفراء برا لحتى مر المشروع م. وهذا المشروع لن يمر لانه هذا المشروع سيؤدي الى سوريا دوله مكونات الى دوله الى دوله طائف وبالتالي سيخلق صراع طويل ومديد وسيخلق دوله فاشله فاشله مضمونه اسرائيل فاشله مضمونه على الطريقه العراقيه واللبنانيه يريدون استنساخ هذا النموذج بالقوه وهن تركوا سوريا تنهار ليقولوا سوريا دوله فاشله وجنيف بوابه التقسيم وبكره بتشوفوا والشعب السوري بيحكم علي جنيف بوابه دوله محاصصه ودوله تقسيم والقضية الكردية لن تحل بهذه الطريقة وما رح يعطوا شيء للأكراد اللي اللي فاتوا فيه من باب الأكراد لا يعطوا للعلويين لحتى يضعفوا سوريا ويضمنوا إنه سوريا تبقى ضعيفة وتبقى تحت السيطرة مصلحة من؟ والأخطر لم عن مصلحة إسرائيل والأخطر من ذلك أن تبقى مرهونة اقتصاديا وهون الخطر الثاني لح يفوتوا بشركة <تصفيق> Uh, new people's republics in a situation like this it's the last man standing no matter how badly he's been beaten the last man standing is the victor and it's a little ticey and I know that <laughs> there may be some problems with this I'm taking too much too not enough time but too much in any case but here a couple of words for our vocabulary for the next while war is compulsion whether it's non-lethal or if it is lethal lethal as what we've known in the past the other word is failed state or failing state it's not an event it's a process And if you do it slowly and quietly enough, people will go to sleep. In the words of one of my favorite philosophers, Hugo Chavez, <laughs> if you do this well enough, long enough, slowly enough, benignly enough, your enemy will wake up dead. <laughs>